December 2020. A week before Christmas, something like that. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? This is one of the orchids from the Tres Amigos from Gus Rechner Orchideen. This is my Maxima Alba. And I was very, very disciplined in not getting her out of the old media, not this time of year. Let her show me when she's ready to go, assuming it would be spring, but no, this is happening now. So I've got my kit and caboodle ready here. And we're going to attack, oh my goodness, we are going to attack this right now. Check this out. Look at this. Amazing. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put it into a mix of inorganic media that I would like to transition her into. Let me see if I can do it at this angle without doing damage. Mindful of the new roots. I'm at a different angle, as you might be able to tell. I'm chasing the best light around the property. <laughs> We're kind of southwest now. <laughs> Look at these roots. I think I'm best working off over here. Right. This is great. I like seeing this a lot. So this had coconut husk in it and small seedling bark and there's nothing wrong actually with the quality and the feel of this bark at all it's still rock hard so I could have left this orchid in its current setup over the winter with no problems whatsoever. Yeah, but now, you know, I didn't know that these roots were so incredible. I had no idea. Hmm, okay, well, we've started now. So we're going ahead and finishing it off. Clean her up, this is coming off all of it relatively easy. Which is great. In coconut, in the case of coconut husk, if you're trying to remove it, well, first of all, I always work with wet media when I remove organic media from the roots. I always pre-soak my orchids. This one was watered maybe three days ago, so I didn't pre-soak her. I just saw the roots yesterday, and I thought, okay, we'll take care of it straight away. Um, so this one was still wet from the watering of three days ago. But considering the husks of coconut, it's best for me, in my opinion, to work with it while wet, because you can see here, let me see if I can get this in focus on camera. You can see here how lovely that root is and it's attached itself to the coconut husk. Sometimes the roots can also grow through. That is when I take the husk and just break it. You know, you slice it into these bits and pieces because some of the husks they come in are actually half shell coconut skin. But you saw how easily that broke off. And look, I have two plants. Okay. Curveball. But we'll work with that. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. Definitely curveball. That I wasn't expecting to get two. All right. Back to the coconut husk. They come in half shell, outer skin of the coconut. And then the roots happily grow in between and into the fiber in a length downward manner. That is a nightmare to get off without doing a lot of destruction. If I ever, ever were to bring an orchid in that was in that situation, I will show you exactly what I do. 
because I actually go layer by layer and peel one strip at a time as it comes off naturally. And in this case, I squeezed it to make it more pliable and release the root. And then here's another thing. I always see people peeling the sheaths from the top down. Um, I don't do that. I start from the bottom up so that I can see what am I doing, what is underneath before I rip from the top all the way down and then break a growth, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's why I start from the bottom up. And I may actually not go to town on this sheath, she says, because of the root tips. And as my mouth moves, my hands still move. Just, just one more, right? Okay. Now I would like to get this off because she's going into a media that is a little bit more water retentive than what was before. And I don't want any wicking of that media on my orchid going up this dry material and causing possible rot. So I'm going to take that away. And now I am free to remove the top because I don't have to worry about what else am I ripping off on the bottom. I've always been so eager just, oh, big sheath, let's pull. And then bam, not doing that again. So I don't know if you are a peeler or not, but do you peel from the top down? or from the bottom up? Let me know. We all have our different little affinities regarding how we mess and fiddle with our orchids. <laughs> okay, there's something back here I still want to get rid of. And for now, that will be that. bottom of the rhizome is clean enough for me to be okay. So the curveball is that additional little plant. Methinks I need to think. It shall be treated like a little seedling that it is and hopefully I can pull it through. Are there any dead roots at all? I only found one little candidate. But no, they're all firm. So because I've had this orchid now quite a long time, I have not seen any signs of snails or anything like that. Beautiful, healthy orchid. And I am not even going to spray with hydrogen peroxide or wash this under the sink. There is no need to stress these roots out. I'm leaving the organic material on it as best as possible. I'm not messing around with the general makeup. I have a kink in this root here. This branch, which I shall take off. and we're ready for potting up. And my thoughts are, because I don't have any more ceramis, I am testing Akadama mixed with terrarium grit. I have my little doohickey. I have prepared my pot with the loop for the self-watering. And I have every intention of mixing the leka the grit and the akadama together. My question now being, 
It had coconut husk, which is more water retentive than just bark. So I can fill up the bottom with leka. Maybe I don't need the terrarium grit. So I'm just walking through my thought process. I'm not trying to stall for time. I will have timestamps in the description. So anybody else, please feel free to jump ahead. But I'm just voicing my thought process because with the, if I had ceramus, I knew exactly ceramus and leka, in you go and grow. Happy days. What I'm going to do is fill up with leka, terrarium grit, because it is not as water retentive, but put the top with some akadama so that the roots will find their way in as opposed to using a microfiber or a sphagnum moss. There we go. The process of elimination. We are ready to potter up. Now, before I put the orchid in, I'm going to put a support wire around my support already. This way I don't have to jiggle the orchid around while I'm trying to wire up the support wire. Eliminate a little bit any more messing with the roots. So now I have her in the height that I don't want. She's far too deep, but I'm going to keep her lower in the pot because I can always raise her. What I've also done is selected medium to small size leka. I picked it out of my bucket and just sorted medium to small size leka. I'm just going to add some grit now so that the roots get the half and half feel of what was drier being the bark and the leka will be the wet component simulating the cocoa husk. Really, really watching those root tips. And they are my backup. Now I'm just going to give her a little shake at this point and then fill up with more grit. I have never used grit and leka in combination for seedlings. So this is a first. But I think that the, the more people use coconut husks in nurseries as a form of media, as opposed to the packed shells, the more that terrarium grit is going to become a factor in my setup because I like the fact that I have the already the humidity retentive material of coconut husk, which I'm simulating with leka, and then the dry balancing out of that, of the, of the bark, which I'm simulating with grit. And that works well for me. So I'm now wondering if I am going to pull her up or not, because she's pretty stable in the pot of her own accord. I am going to secure her, however, because you never know. There's breezy days will also come into my dining room where they live. Okay, so I have some roots here that were used to a very wet environment. And yeah, we're going to put Akadama on top because after all, this is an experiment. Especially in the summer, I want to get away from sphagnum moss it builds up algae, gets slimy looking in my climate. I don't like it at all. Microfibers can dry out very quickly. A lot of maintenance is required. Not a bad thing when you are at home. But you know, I'm hopeful. I'm looking forward. I'm thinking in a positive way that maybe I will get back to work again and I won't have time. And I find Akadama is extremely, extremely water retentive and serves the purpose very, very well as a top layer. And I may 
This I need to find out, experiment a little bit more. I may need, may need to adjust the Akadama on most of my other pots when they're growing roots instead of using the microfiber and sphagnum moss. What I wanted to add, of course, the wicking is much more effective in a smaller pot as opposed to a large one. And that is also a factor then when it comes to the layering. But in this case, I think the balance is absolutely right. It's just missing the label now. There, and a little bit of water. So the media that I used was wet. The orchid's roots were hydrated, being in wet bark. I don't need to flush this through. I'm just going to pour some fertilized water in the bottom. I'm going to put it inside so as not to stress it. And I shall work on the little seedling. Right, we need to prepare some more grit. <laughs> because what I'm going to do is mix grit with Akadama only, like I would use Ceramis. So again, Akadama is much more water retentive than Ceramis because it is smaller and almost gets sort of a, like a muddy kind of texture to it. And I'm going to break that up with grit. But first I want to flush out some of the dust because it is one of the cleanest of all the inorganics that I use. But there is always a little layer of dust. And now, where's my pot? There you are, a little cup. Let's make ourselves a nice mixture. This reminds me of my childhood days, messing around with mud pies. And just mix that up a little bit. I don't want to squash the Akadama too much. I don't want to break it up too much, so I'm careful. And yes, I do flush out the initial dust of the Akadama and it takes forever to dry. This is a couple of days old since I flushed out my next batch of Akadama, not realizing I'm gonna need it so soon. Oh, well, here we are. Right, so let me get some of the not so mixed up Akadama into the base. And I'm gonna have to make another label. And then start getting up there. Well, well, well. I got two. I'm going to need more. So I'm going to start supplementing with more grit. Not more Akadama because the cup is very small. I have plenty of water retention with the amount of Akadama I have in there. I have plenty of the wicking. So I'm going to bump it up with more grit. So now the ratio is not half and half. It's turned into 30% Akadama, 60% grit. Note to self, by the way. <laughs> I'd be very excited if this works because again, I want to get away from being dependent on having to ship in Ceramis. As this is a seedling, it does require very water retentive media. And then all we can do is hope that it will make it based on the time of year. That is where I'm dubious. Not with the mixture of the media, but I think what's gonna happen here is it's gonna throw out its own little set of roots soon because this growth, there's a tiny new growth here. I hope the camera is focusing. That is going to produce some roots. So let's encourage it to do that. Where are my holes? Back there. The little growth can go there. All right. Let's get you settled. And I'm going to leave it a little bit lower in the pot if I can manage to do this controlled. I was not expecting to be repotting anything today, and I was not expecting to be dealing with a tiny little seedling. But both are good things, no complaints from me at all. 
So we have it high enough for now. Don't want it that high. Don't want those new roots to have to look as to where they're going and crawl across the top and all that nonsense. Want them to get in there ASAP. Take some more of the 100% Akadama and place that around the base. So let's see, this is an experiment. This is a first for me, grit and Akadama only. I've used it for my Rapiculus Lelius before, but never as a substitute with only grit, without the lava rock and the leka, etc., to simulate what I normally get out of Ceramis, the same effect, wicking and drying and aeration. So this is a first. Now I'm going to top this one up with rainwater only because it poured with rain last night and I happen to have some on hand. If push comes to shove and I do not like what I'm seeing on the top there, let's say there's too much moss growing or too much going on with regards to humidity, I can still have space left here on the top for small lava rock, which is what I will then add if I need to. If I don't like how this is developing and starting to maybe deteriorate, then I shall protect it with some lava rock. Oh, well, my goodness. That was interesting. I hope it was for you. It was for me, certainly, because I always like finding new ways of making things work and uh, not having to be so dependent on any kind of imports or shipping costs or delayed in packaging. And these are things that I have available locally. I've got Akadama I can easily source and Terrarium Grip. Clearly, I bought it here. So that's all for these two guys. The other one I've already put inside. I don't want to stress them out. They are not used to being outside. But for this and for filming, this was a perfect quick timing. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.